wonderful wonderful festive week diwali dhanteras govardhan puja bhai dooj very warm welcome to all of you we will continue on our journey of bhagavad gita today we will pick up a shloka where arjun is asking a very important question to lord krishna and that's what we going to talk about right he during the course of bhagavad gita he continues to ask that starting with this particular shloka that uh, you know a person who is enlightened how does he walk how does he talk how does he you know he wants to know their symptoms that's the question he's going to ask and we are going to delve into that topic to see uh, the the you know stark differences between people who start uh, cutting a corner or start advancing spiritually and people who are still firmly entrenched in the world right it's a journey but then if somebody is firmly entrenched we are going to look at the symptoms on the both sides of the spectrum today so let's get started i'm going to share my screen and then we will get started so a very warm welcome to all of you once again i'm going to share my screen give me a sec and uh, nitin ji can you make pallavi ji co host yeah pallavi ji is not co host as yet not yet you only can make her the host so oh, i only have the power to do that so sunil ji the thanks is i'll take back my thanks then i'm just kidding uh, let me do that yes ek pallavi ji okay i think you are you should be the co host now pallavi ji i hope you're all set yes thank you yes all right so let's get started again a very warm welcome to all of you <clears throat> we will get started by invoking the blessings of god and guru like we always do guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwar ha guru sakshat par brahm tasmay shri guruve namah vasudev sutam devam kamsa chanur mardanam dev ki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat guru krishnam vande jagat guru radhe radhe very warm good morning good evening to all of you so let's get started uh, today i picked up the shloka 2.54 as we are doing a recap of chapter 2 with all the key concepts um in that journey so i'm picking up some of the key highlights or some of the key discussion points from chapter 2 may not be in sequence because technically we are in chapter 4 and we are going to resume that very soon so i picked up 2.54 to pick up an important discussion today i will recite it you are welcome to follow along arjun uvacha sthita pragyasya ka bhasha केशव स्थित प्रभाषेत किसीत व्रजेत किर्जुन अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञा का भाषा सामधिस्त केशवा स्थित प्रभाषेता किसीत व्रजेत किम जी यू हैव कोल्ड बट योर प्रोनाउंसिएशन इज नॉट एट ऑल इम्पैक्टेड व्हिच इज अ गुड साइन थैंक यू ऑल राइट लेट्स पिक अप फ्यू मोर हैंड्स या राधे राधे संध्या जी प्लीज गो हेड राधे राधे अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञा का भाषा सामधिस्थ केशव स्थित किं प्रभाषेत किसीत व्रजेत किम वेरी नाइस संध्या राधे राधे ओके 
अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञ का भाषा समाधिस्थ से केशव सिद्धि किम प्रभाषित किमासीत व्रजेत किम राधे राधे वेरी नाइस राधे 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 राहुल जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है राधे राधे अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञ का भाषा समाधि केशव स्थिति किम प्रभाषित किम आसित व्रजेत किम जय माता दी जय श्री राम थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑलराइट राधे राधे साई राम जी प्लीज को है साई राम जी राधे राधे अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञ का भाषा समाधिस्त केशवा स्थित किम प्रभाषेता किम आसित व्रजेत किम वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस साई राम जी दैट वॉज वेरी फ्लुएंट थैंक यू श्याम जी राधे राधे किसको है राधे 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 अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रगस्य का भाषा समाधिस्थस्य केशव स्थित धी किम प्रभाषेत किम आसित व्रजेत किम राधे राधे वेरी नाइस थैंक यू राधे राधे लेट्स क्विकली पिक अप द रिमेनिंग हैव वी कैन कवर दोस एंड देन वी गेट स्टार्टेड डीपर इनटू द टॉपिक उदय जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है या राधे राधे या अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा समाधिस्त केशव स्थित किम प्रभाषेत किम आसीत व्रजेत किम श्री रम्या जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है राधे राधे अर्जुन स्थित प्रज्ञ से का भाषा अर्जुन उच स्थित प्रज्ञ का भाषा केशव स्थित किम प्रभाषेत किम आसीत व्रजेत किम वेरी नाइस कविता जी वेर यू ज्वाइनिंग अस फ्रॉम ओक्लाहोमा ओक्लाहोमा वेरी नाइस थैंक यू सो आई वुड एनकरेज ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स इवन दो यू आर नॉट रिसाइटिंग जस्ट डू अ लिप सिंक ट्राई टू रिसाइट एज बेस्ट एज यू कैन बिकॉज just reciting or trying to do that itself is very very auspicious it can have a transformative effect that is how powerful bhagavad gita is and you can actually surprise yourself by being able to recite very fluently in a matter of few months a lot of people here you can't imagine they started off and now they can recite it so fluently so that is the beauty of sanskrit so please keep trying it and then you can always raise hands and come forward okay last four hands we will take and then we'll get we have a good amount of stuff to cover today so let's get started uh, yes riya ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe arjuna uvach sit pragnasya khabash samadhi stasya keshava sit dhikim prabhashita किम आसीत व्रजेत किम वेरी नाइस थैंक यू रिया जी ओके लास्ट थ्री हैंड्स एंड देन वी विल गेट स्टार्टेड रियल क्विक आशुतोष जी राधे राधे प्लीज को अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा समाधिस्तस्य केशव स्थित दिकिम प्रभासेत किम आसीत व्रजेत किम वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस आशुतोष जी लास्ट टू रूपा जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है राधे राधे एवरीवन अर्जुन स्थित प्रज्ञ का भाषा समाधि केशवा 
नेम Which which refers to a name which has killed killed demon. He had killed a Keshi demon. So now he is calling him Keshav. Sometimes he is calling him Madhu Sudan. So a doubt is like a demon because it can become bigger and bigger and bigger. And in our spiritual journey, if we get stuck at doubt, there is not any big disfavor we can do to ourselves. Why? Why did you stop? Because you know I didn't think deep enough, or I got stuck at this question, or I didn't get answer to this question. Okay, that is the biggest tragedy of human life. If we get stuck, so a doubt is called a demon, and whenever Arjun is having a doubt, he is calling Lord Krishna with a name and referring that slay this doubt, the demon which has arisen in my mind. And now he is asking, what is the disposition of one who is situated in divine consciousness? He is saying, is he going to talk and walk and eat and sit and like me kind of a deal? Okay. Now this is not a straightforward answer to that. During the course of bhagavad gita as we would see krishna is going to ex- keep explaining this concept however this is the conjecture at which arjun asked this question okay so let's get started on this particular topic so today we are going to discuss what is the we'll see some of the symptoms or the differences between people who are illumined and who are worldly people now these are two ends of the spectrum however we would look at people who are trying to make take spiritual strides as well trying their best to align to the principles and trying to make a difference in their lives as well you know that itself is so empowering that changes would start coming in we are all under maya the influence of maya god is maya dhish we are maya dhin and for as long as we are under the sway of maya there are bound to be things that we will do out of ignorance We yesterday we discussed that Ved Vyas had said that the very first problem or the biggest problem humanity or humans have is ignorance. Agyana me vasya mool karanam, hi mool karanam, and through ignorance the other things start happening. Right, starting the first ignorance is we are this body, and that's where the problems start compounding or multiplying. So we will tackle this topic today. Let's move on. now this designations of sthit pragya you know one who is with steady intellect samadhi sta situated in trance it's applied to enlightened people people who are enlightened sthit pragya is a very elevated state now when he is is hearing from lord krishna about the state of perfect yoga samadhi he is asking this question can i know the mind of a person who is in this you know how will his mind operate how will that person uh, you know his day to day stuff that will manifest if he is in that state of mind and how what kind of a behavior would it translate to now in this verse he starts posing this question and this is one of the 16 set of questions he is going to ask and lord krishna is going to take this opportunity to go in oops i don't know what happens okay to go into the concept secrets of karm yog bhakti yog gyan yog all these concepts lord krishna is going to take this opportunity to reveal these concepts to to arjun and this knowledge is called guhyam guhyatar and guhyatam secret more secret and most secret okay i'll explain you later uh what are those three things anyway we'll go into that but that's a these 16 set of questions this is where it starts from okay so i found this is pretty interesting now whether this guy is uh, sthit pragya or not i don't know but it is certainly a nice attitude to have right it might remind you of that story of tukaram and word every adversity into something that is 
beneficial for you and don't lose your cool around it okay so if you don't get your dholak make a tabla out of it they say when life deals with lemon make a lemonade out of it okay never give up so let's move on we'll start off just to get the discussion and thought process going i'll pose a question not have a prolonged discussion but just to get the thought process what is the most valuable thing in the world anybody no i will rule out one option drawing god's grace okay that is priceless something most valuable thing okay god's Sandeji, grace is the please, most please. priceless thing for sure okay and there are knowledge things, wisdom right? hmm. knowledge wisdom very true yes anybody else couple of other hands i see sam ji please go ahead yes sam ji divine knowledge divine knowledge you have qualified the knowledge with divine knowledge very nice yes valerie <laughs> most precious yeah i i would have said i was going to say time time is the most valuable thing time is money yes it is valuable for sure great anybody else maybe we can take one more hand and then i'll yes. we'll move on okay sam ji please go yes, ahead how about contentment contentment yeah that is also valuable thing right? it said the what the person who has the most rich person is the person with the least number of desires right? great point sam ji yeah. please go ahead association of devotees yeah that is truly priceless it's very valuable you don't get that so easily beautiful yes sumesh ji even monica ji two more hands we can take yes sumesh ji please go ahead develop love for god wow develop love for prem dhan prem dhan developing i think all of you are right so i don't want to spend that. maybe one more hand we can take so yes. monica ji please go ahead so prem dhan was also one my answer <laughs> but again also uh, self realization maybe self realization i would say god realization goes higher than self realization but yes that's a great aspiration to have yes so the most valuable thing for human life as such is acquiring knowledge right we have gyan indriyas god has given us so if we get divine knowledge pure knowledge pure knowledge is god's knowledge and it's not just about knowledge it's not about quantity it's about quality in fact some people get into the habit of acquiring knowledge from wherever they can which is a good thing to begin with but then we have to look at from a shastra vasana this is also a problem you start reading too many help self help books shastra vasana in fact we pick up nuggets first of all we should align to the scriptural knowledge hopefully if we find a saint but that is a most uplifting powerful um pursuit a humans can have one piece of knowledge can change your life one piece of knowledge just one piece if you simply contemplate deep enough that i am a soul not this body that itself would take your life to a different trajectory altogether all the problems that we have is because we think ourselves versus body and then all the isms and all the problems and all the ego battles they start from that problem of uh, point onwards only so one piece of knowledge is good enough but the knowledge has to be from the bona fide source and you have to have contemplated it enough it's not about how much you have eaten it's how much you have digested or assimilated that is what the quantity is right and that is when we talk about this concept of shravan manan and nididhyasan nididhyasan is shravan is listening we listen something manan is deep contemplation around that concept and nididhyasan is when it leads to implementation with your firm belief of the intellect that yes this is it this is it when your intellect is convinced this is it it will automatically do that so let's start with a light light a moment so there was this couple right grandfather and grandma now this grandfather and grandma they go you know they said all right the retirement life we have worked hard let's go take a two seater ride enjoy a two seater ride so they go to this young man pilot they say we are too old to fly don't have our pilot lesson certificate rather can you fly us we want to take a nice trip on this one so the pilot says you know what it's going to cost you 300 dollars per person so grandpa thinks that you know that is way too much for his pocket okay that's not something that he's going to agree to so he negotiates and bargains and negotiates like we all do right and then finally the pilot says all right i i will make a deal to you 150 dollars per person if you stay quiet 
So grandpa thinks it's a great deal. Okay, so they sit down. And then the pilot starts taking twists and turns, you know, he'll look at this turn, an acrobat turn, the left turn, the right turn, and all those kind of gymnastics he does in the midair. But grandpa was quiet and no noise came at all. And the pilot descends down, comes down. And then he tells grandpa, you know, that was pretty impressive. I did so many gymnastics in the air, but you were quiet. Absolutely no noise whatsoever. How did you pull off that feat? He said, yes, of course, it was difficult. You know, when grandma was fa falling down, it was very difficult for me to stay quiet. But I did it. <laughs> it is. So grandma it. fell off the plane. <laughs> He fell off the plane, but he kept quiet, right? <laughs> so his belief system, his Nidityasana told him that money is important, right? So we have some similar kind of belief system, right? Our life and all the stuff that we focus on is more important than what is the true, what where is the true interest of our soul will be served, right? So, so but how did it happen? The Nidityasana, he had his intellect was firmly convinced, no matter what. Right? This is it. So, we have that capacity. There was a guy and a wife, you know, they were going around, around Grand Canyon and, and, you know, we have this tendency of taking selfies. So, the wife was taking selfies all around here, there and everywhere and then a canyon came and she really wanted to get adventurous and started taking a selfie near the canyon like this. So, the husband said, if you want to do that, at least give me the lunch pack okay? because his value system dictated that that was more important than her, right? So the point is, anything like that, that are intellectually convinced, is drawn from Nidityasan. So we have the ability and we can actually channelize it. And that is what we are going to focus on today. So let's move on. Now, starting with 2.54, this is where Arjun is asking, what is the disposition of one who is situated in divine consciousness? And 3.1 is saying, if you consider knowledge superior to fruitative works, why did you ask me to wage this terrible war? Okay, this question we are going to address as well. These are the series of 16 questions that he is going to ask. Then he further goes to say, why is a person impelled to commit sinful acts even unwillingly as if by force? These are all very important questions that Arjun is asking. Then furthermore, he goes on to ask in 4.4 .4 that you, if you were born much after Vivaswan, the sun god, how am I to understand that in the beginning you instructed the science to him? We're going to look at all these. So like this, if you look at it, he's going to ask 16 questions. I'm not going to get into deeper detail for each. Maybe I'll pick it up. But these are the 16 questions that you ask. And Lord Krishna is going to take an opportunity to answer these questions. And for the benefit of humanity, detail out the science of Karam Yoga, Gyan Yoga and Bhakti Yoga during the course of 18 chapters and 700 shlokas that we will cover. Okay. Let's move on. Now, you see the difference. What is the difference between oops, these two on your screen? Anybody who wants to take a shot at it? Yes, Sri Ramya. Please go ahead. On the right side, the flame is stable, and on the left side, uh, uh, the uh, flame is uh, flickering, and it looks like it's quite windy. That yes, very true. Maybe one more hand, and then I'll explain the concept and move on. Yes. Uday Kumarji, please go ahead. Yeah, the left one is that uh, flickering mind, and mm -hmm. the right one is the stable mind. It is surrendering. Mm -hmm. Very true. I'm right. Yeah. Yes, very true. Yes, Monica, you wanted to add something? Please go ahead. Uh, apart from the flickering part, uh, the, the left side one also um, is, is towards the brighter side and the right one is in, in the dark. Right. That's a good question point and observation as well. So yes, so basically Sthit Pragya, next time this word comes to you, just bring this candle images to your head, okay? This is a very important concept to understand, okay? A flickering mind, as you see, this candle is flickering, is all over the place. It is not able to make a resolute intellect, 
right it, with every sway of the wind it will flicker oh maybe this maybe that okay maybe this little bit of this little bit of that the steady mind is firm has a firm decision like right? nidhyasan again it has already made a firm decision this is it okay that firm conviction is there now we may think you know here is preeti ji let's hear from preeti ji as well preeti ji please go ahead radha radha preeti ji प्रीति <laughs> you were so good in studies you did i am i you know iit could have had a you know very successful corporate life i in fact in my interactions i i feel you know he he could easily pass on as a ceo of a big company the way he runs meetings the professionalism the preciseness the succinctness the everything is so precise for them why did he do that and he gives a simple answer because i just believed in the knowledge you all hear that he just he said i believed in the knowledge i mean it's very simple response to that so believing itself he believed to an extent that said this is it that's what i'm going to do devote my life to because i am a soul and i want to complete this journey i need to find a spiritual master and then devote my life and get out of this cycle or serve god that is the level of his conviction now if i ask this question how many of us believe in god we would like to raise our hand maybe we can raise our hand if you want to believe in god does anybody believe in god here probably that's why we are here right now yeah vidhi ji there's quite a few hands right they believe in god which is pretty amazing now our scriptures tell us if you believe in god truly believe in god you would realize god there is no difference between you believing in god and realizing god right we do but then not as firmly as we believe that you know what the world has some bit of happiness here it's not it is bad but not so bad as yet when we truly believe in god we would realize him there is absolutely no difference between believing in god and realizing god that is what our scriptures tell us yes abhishek a uh, few hands i see uh, is there a question i can answer that please go ahead no 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 question sorry okay uh, jigyasa ji please go ahead take yes sir ji i think everyone raised their hand when you were asking okay they are all okay believe in god okay got it yes. so that's yes. a good sign yes mm -hmm. i would say we are trying to believe in god okay the day our faith is 100% there is absolutely no difference between god realization and actually believing in god okay that is that is how powerful it is in fact it is said we say ram ram sita ram radhe sham right or om namah shivaya but the day we truly believe that there is absolutely no difference between god and his name because he has filled his name with all of his potencies and his powers you will say ra and you will go into stubb avastha you will faint that is the level that is the power in god's name right so you will not even be able to complete the name you will get into ashta satvik bhav that is the power in god's name so we it's like on ongoing attempt to increase our faith if we truly believed in god we would have realized god okay now the the reason for that is our mind is flickering it's not sthir prakya there is no steadiness in it we hear multiple philosophies theories and we our mind keeps on swing here there and everywhere okay sthir prakya is the candle which is without an air it doesn't flicker steady that's it this is it and this concept we have sai atmika buddhi also comes in subsequent chapter where god says that multi branched mind is something you need to do away with single track mind focus mind is what is needed on the path of spirituality where you make a firm decision and start working towards it all right nevertheless let's move on now people in this world have spoken about this we, we are subservient to our gunas so different people have different compositions of the gunas throughout 
throughout their day and their lives, right? Why our mind flickers? It flickers because we are under the sway of these gunas. Three gunas, material gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. We have spoken about it in the past. I will do a quick recap. These three gunas are the tricolored maya. We are under the influence of these gunas throughout the day. So when you are under the mode of goodness, which is sattva, you will have noble uplifting thought. You will think, okay, let me help something. Let me watch some, some spiritual video. Let me uh, you know, read something nice, which, which will be helpful for my self-growth and stuff like that. When you are in rajas mode, you will think, let's do party. Let's enjoy that, you know, that cuisine, the new restaurant that has opened up or that new movie that has come up. You get into passion mode. And when you're in Thomas, you said, all right, laziness, slothfulness, sleep, intoxication, all that stuff. And these three gunas, they keep on shifting throughout the days. And two people do not have the same guna at the same time to the same proportion. Not possible. Statistically, if you, somebody has a mathematics background, you can understand how many probability you can run into just with these three in fractions and all. That means it is very unfair to expect somebody to think exactly like you. That is why we have conflicts between people, friends, spouses, kids, boss, because gunas are shifting throughout the day. So wise people, they understand that aspect, right? Worldly people, they don't. They just get into a battle and then start complaining. That person does not understand me. This person is like that only, right? They get into that mindset. But wise people, enlightened people, or people who start working, aligning to the higher principle, they start understanding. You know what? Our mind is an interplay of gunas. Maybe this person is in a mode of ignorance at this point, or his passion is high at this point, or maybe he's in sattva. That means maybe that person is going to sit in satsang for one hour. If I am going to stretch that beyond one hour, again, that person will get uneasy. So all these things, they start appreciating and understanding it without picking up fights and conflicts with others because it's an interplay of guna. So they start setting realistic expectations with an understanding that we all are under the sway of gunas. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why our mind flickers. With steady practice, we can actually start bringing it under control because now you are trying to transcend these gunas. You are not subservient or slave to your gunas. Your mind may say, let's do it, okay? But your higher power intellect would say, no, I will not do it because I have, I have heard in Bhagavad Gita that you, know, you can transcend your gunas. So I'm going to not listen to my mind. So you have the ability to your free will to even override your natural tendencies or gunas. That is what Lord Krishna is telling us. Okay, But the key point here to understand it's because of our gunas, we have a fickle mind which keeps on flickering. And that is what we need to tame. Let's move on. Now, let's look at this interesting thing. You know, we get misery from the world. We get misery from the world. What do we do? A couple of things we can do. Oops, I don't know why. It's running like this for me. It just goes towards the end. Okay, so if we have misery, we can cry, complain, whine, we do that. That's our usual reaction. Either we will complain or we will whine about it. Or some people, like Krishna says, Chatur Vidha Bhajante Man, Jigyasu Arthu Arti and Jnani. So if you have misery, a lot of people, they go to turn to God during the time of when they are not getting their material life. Something that they are desiring in their material life, they go to God. Hey, God, give me this. Get me the visa. Get my son or daughter married. Give me a daughter or a son. All these things happen. right? So people turn to God. And God is very well. So when we get misery, either we cry, whine, or we go to God. Now, just think about this concept. What if you get misery from God? Who will you turn to? Or what will you do? Okay, we'll come get to that. Just think about that. Who are you going to turn to if you get misery from God? Anybody who wants to take this question right now? It's a very deep question, right? What are you going to do if you get misery from God? Yes, Jyoti Ji, please go ahead. You're going to go to the boss of God? Radhe, Radhe, no. I'll, um, if I have to, if I get misery from God, I'll happily accept it. Endure it. Happily accept it. Okay, good. And why would you do that? Because definitely it, it would have been my karma 
which is coming in one or the other form. And as you have explained it earlier that God only gives a drop of it. And not only he, he just, he tried to give a very little part of it. These misery right. help us to grow. So God knows what's the best for us. So that's why. Beautiful point. Yes, that is very true. See the beauty of this. Yeah. Okay, I'll come back to that. Let's hear from a couple of more hands I see. So let's hear from them and then I'll come back to it. Yes, Samji. Samji, yes, please go ahead. And the same way you feel that uh, you 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 submit your desires to the God's desire. Don't wish anything against him. Whatever he's doing it for, he's, he must be doing it for a good, good reason, good cause. Mm -hmm. So there must be Sharmagati. So you surrender yourself, whatever your wish is there, my wish is with you, something like that. Great. Wonderful point. Yes, Monica Ji. Please go ahead. Uh, Radhe, Radhe. Uh, so it could be serendipity, not could be, it is serendipity. Uh, everything is happening for a reason and also that we are settling our karma. What will you do? What will be your attitude if a misery is thrown your way? Uh, with the belief that we are settling our karma, we'll just gladly accept it because uh, Krishna it, has a way for us. Will it make you excited? Will you ask God for more of misery or will you just accept, accept it with equanimity or you will complain and then say, all right, it's my karma? Just accept, thinking that it's my karma. I'm settling some accounts and then go with the flow. Great. Yes, Pallaviji. Last hand we'll take and then we'll yes. move forward. A lot um, of other stuff to discuss as mm -hmm. well. Yes. I'll read out the response from Ashutoshji. He mentioned we don't get it. We just assume we are getting it. It's blessings in disguise. It's blessing in the disguise. That's an interesting one. Beautiful. Okay. You wanted to add something as well, uh, Pallaviji? On to... No, I just wanted to read, okay. read out the Ashutosh. Great. So let me continue with that. Uh, couple of hands, I can see camera on. So let's take Shamji and Sandhya. So if you can turn on your cameras as well, that'll be yes. great. Shamji, please Everybody. go ahead. Yeah. Radhe, Radhe. Well, this, is, this is exactly my situation, which was this about 10 years ago. You can say ditto then. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> I just... It took me some time to believe in God. It took me some time to be with His with His with His flow, but finally I was there, and today I'm here. I have nothing with me, but I am still content. That's what I can say. Correct. Wonderful. Great learning. Yes, Sandhya. Yes, Sandhya. Actually, there are two comments. So Uday Kumar ji says human form is the most valuable because we can see God realization with the Guru, a God realized saint. And Rahul ji says Prasad Buddhi. So, start the buddhi. Yeah, very great points. I think you very nice. I think we've been paying close attention to what we've been discussing in these sessions. Wonderful. Yes, Sudhakarji, you wanted to say something real quick? Please go ahead, Radhe Radhe. Sudhakarji, please go ahead. Yeah. I, actually, I thought to share my thought on the one you have asked. Oh, if you know that the misery is coming from the God, then obviously, at least I will say that that is a boon to me. Because you know the source, right? The God is never give the misery. Maybe we may feel at that point it could be a misery, but it is an opportunity to excel or Very good. Yep. Great point, Sudhakarji. Last but not the least, Sumeshi, real quick. Please go ahead, Radhi Radhi, Sumeshi. Ham use person ke roop mein accept karenge chahe wo happiness de ya misery de. Radhi Radhi. Wonderful. Beautiful point. True. So, as if we have a choice, right? So, God obviously he picks up a drop and gives it to us, but his intent is not to punish us. He gives us in a manner that is not beyond our ability. He gives us things that are well within the test that we can take. Okay, we have to have trust on them. And the other fact of it is, our common concept around God's grace is, right? Why do we go to God? Our arati se sukh sampatti gharave kasht mite tanka. That is our concept. The real grace of God is when he starts giving you material reversals. If he would give us all the boons that we desire, that would be the worst disservice he will do to us because then we will have no incentive to get out of this material world. We will be very happy. In Tihar jail during the winters, the crime rate picks up. Why? Because people get shelter, food and company in Tihar jail. So this material world is a jailhouse for the conditioned souls. It will never make you feel comfortable here. And God, when he starts is showering his grace, he starts giving you tests. That is 
correct understanding of this material world. There are only three plans in this world. One, the plan that you make for yourself. Other one is the your friends or your family or your parents will make for you. You know what? This is right for you. This is how you should be. Third one is the plan that Krishna has for you. And that plan is the best one that we have to firmly believe in. Okay, so people who start progressing spiritually, they understand this concept as well. Previously, we spoke about the play of gunas. Now we're talking about this concept as well. Anything that is happening is happening for a good reason. So anyway, it's not going to change. If you complain, you have forfeited an opportunity to align to God's will and purify yourself. Okay, that is how it needs to be understood. Now, let's move on. So, who wants change? You know, everybody wants a change. And if you ask who wants to change, nobody wants to. Now, we are going to talk about VIPs and WIPs. You have to read it as WIP, not VVIP. Okay. VVI, it's work in progress, WIP and VIPs, they have already become important because they're enlightened or illumined. Okay. So, let's look at some of the differences between these two. Worldly minded and illumined, and even the people who are trying to make a difference or to strive for aligning to spiritual principles. Let's look at some of the aspects of it. They are under the sway of three gunas. They will do things and then justify it. You know what? I deserve to get angry. If I had not gotten angry, the other person, you know what would have happened? So they are under the influence. First of all, they have absolutely no control over their gunas because they, they don't even know they have the power over it because nobody expose them to that concept or witness consciousness or the fact that there is something called a free will through which you can transcend your gunas if you want to. So whether you had a question? Radhe, please go ahead, Sumedha ji. Sumedha ji, please go ahead. Radhe, yes, uh, yes, Nitin ji, I have a question. I, I'm sorry, I, it's a question from the previous slide. Um, so how do we know that this is actually a misery from God? You know, we hear a lot of Gurbani, Nitinji, and it says, you know, the Shabads are jo jo tera hukam, tyo tyo hove. But I actually contemplate a lot. Uh, how do we know? Or what, like, you know, how do we come to know that this is a hukam? Or do we have any control here? Or can we do something? Because surrender doesn't mean that we just give up, right? Even right. Gita true. does say inaction. Beautiful. Extent. Beautiful point. Very true. And I had the same question. If surrender means you just give up, then we would not have gotten the electric bulb. You know, Edison, he tried 400 times or 1,000 times, I don't know exact number, maybe 4,000 times. If he had given up, and then at the same time, spirituality tells us to be, pers to persevere, to try hard to the best of your ability. What is the point when you would say, now it is God's will? It's not a very easy, straightforward thing. First of all, of course, you are trying to put in your best. So intuitively, you would know, have you done your best in this situation? Your intuition would start guiding you as you start evolving spiritually. There's no other way to know that. Right? First of all, we don't do actions with attachment to the outcome. But at the same time, we don't simply give up. After the first essay, okay, and become fatalist. Okay, it's God's will only. But then there are things like Adi Bhautik problems come, right? If When the families are wiped off, if a hurricane comes or an earthquake comes, tragedies happen like COVID. So many tragedies happen. People, they lost so many family members, those kind of things. Things which are beyond our control when they happen, you have to accept it as God's will. Honey. There's no other way. You keep complaining, brooding about it, getting depressed. That's not the way. So yes, your intuition would guide you in, in situations that, okay, I, have, I did my best. And it is something which is beyond my control. So God, I accept it as your will. And even if you're not right, because you have that intention, purity of intention in your heart, God will still give you credit because he also understands. You are trying. You're not perfect as yet. So that is how it goes. But as we keep on evolving spiritually, as we keep on praying to God to guide us, your intuition will start guiding you as you progress on that, knowing that, okay, I did my best and beyond that, I have to let go of it. I have to let let go and let God just add a V to that let go part of it as well. And it's a more of an art as we evolve than any science around it. Hope I answered part of your question at least. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right, Sumedha ji. Thank you. Illumined people, they transcend three gunas. Now, they let their gunas dictate them. 
if you are going to play to the whims of your mind and gunas then you are on a self destruct path your mind will never lead you to something that is truly beneficial for you unless you have trained it unless you have empowered it unless you have armed it with the right knowledge it will not your mind will keep on playing tricks with you even when you will meet a saint it will play tricks so we got to be very careful around that and have an ability to read what's going on in our mind but illumined people they start taking control of their mind no so they have they know that the, the way the mind can work and they take they start taking control over over that the second is they get disturbed when they see gunas functioning in the world their effects manifesting in persons objects situations around them you know they get upset somebody is like this they always behave like this to me and why did this happen and why did that happen all that mood continues with them they don't get they understand it's an interplay of it gunas object situation around that and everything is orchestrated in a manner that is a hand picked course for us by god it's not a coincidence that we are born in a particular family we got certain circumstance situation parents and country and all those things everything is perfectly orchestrated it's like a snowflake falling just at the right place everything is happening for a reason okay it's not like that there's a method to this madness then worldly person they get implicated when they see ignorance around them they'll get upset oh man what did they do this kind of a person is and all that stuff and the lumen people they 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 are always tuned into channel p p and n right so i mean today morning in our satsang we had a beautiful he was telling about there are two channels in our mind always some people they always tune into the negative channel their mind will keep on repeating negative stories and some people consciously choose to tune into a positive channel and then that channel becomes their subconscious and their attitude their mindset and starts defining their personality itself okay and illumine people they actually tap into that they spend their time energy brooding about the states of things in the world they'll have a problem for every solution okay the world is bad this is happening war politics everything all the problems statements around so many problems in the world right that is where their mind will go and light and souls they strive for human welfare but they do it because it's their nature to do so and they realize the world is ultimately in the hands of god that humility that understanding that higher level of consciousness is always there that ultimately it's in the hand of you you can do your bit but you cannot get hung up so much into it that you forget the big picture around it right people used to worry what will happen if a crazy president gets control of nuclear buttons will the world will come to an end ice age will come those kind of things will not happen world is perfectly under the control of god and until kaliyug goes through 4 lakh 32000 years kalki avatar is not going to come right in every yuga they say ghor kaliyug has come ghor kaliyug kaliyug is not even a toddler as yet like you know 2000 years what we are talking about here nothing okay so they, they they understand they have to do their duty to the best of their ability and rest is in the hand of hands of god so this is another symptom right even gadi had said we the change you want to see in the world we want to change the world but we are not at all focused on changing ourselves and we we hope and think we can create a dent in the universe it is so naive very naive of us even in an aeroplane air hostess says put on your oxygen mask before you try to save anybody else we don't have our masks on and we think we are going to save the world okay yeah. when i was 25 i wanted to correct the world when i became 50 i thought forget about world if i had corrected my family that itself is a big deal and when i turned 70 then i become wise and then i said if i had only focused on myself the world would have been a better place to live in so that is called wisdom which comes only with age but if you come in contact with a proper saint you will understand it sooner now steady mind does not let's look at some of the symptoms external pleasures through objects of enjoyment they don't go for that right these pleasures they start understanding that they are pleasurable but not beneficial there is a difference between something being pleasurable and being beneficial they don't go with this philosophy of let's do it life is an ice cream enjoy it before it melts who has seen life after death they don't go with the bhautik vadi they understand there is there is a bigger picture and they cannot be wasting their human life just like that life is like a candle to burn yourself and and uplift yourself not an ice cream to be enjoyed enjoyment if you 
is a higher level right enjoyment will come it's not about austerities alone but the direction in which we are seeking is a little misplaced what are the other symptoms of mind which is not steady lament for miseries they always have some kind of a complaint going on in their head about the world and situation and circumstance and people and what and what not what kind of stuff i'll tell you some symptoms around it why me for symptom why me victim card such a terrible thing has happened in my life i am cursed and unlucky my life is a mess world is full of problem and misery what else okay these are some of the things okay my life is a mess i mean that's a pretty strong statement then they succumb to the urges of fear and anger born out of their attachment and desires speculative events in future that will scare them oh my god if this happens this doesn't happen and of course their judgment is usually clouded because they are under this influence or the sway of deep desire and attachment to something these are the some of the symptoms of unsteady mind okay and their urges are for their external things only and it gives them fear and anger all right so anyways i'll put these four quadrants you can take a look at it materialism spiritualism this is how typically these will go does it desired quadrant and all i'll open it up for discussion and announcements now because i've been talking a lot i realized i've been really talking a lot today so i'm going to give it a break for some <laughs> announcements that we have to make and then we'll have a bit of a discussion on this graph um palvi ji or sandhya yes if i can take a moment for quick announcements so today's uh important announcement is about the upcoming rkt diwali dinner this is very exciting this is going to be this uh, saturday october 29 in 20 uh, and uh, there are a lot of exciting uh, stuff um, going to happen it is keynote yeah. by swami ji keynote by swami ji and then splendid evening of festivities diwali celebrations traditional rag uh, traditional ras garba so that is going to be uh, october 29 in allen texas so it looks like it is going to be only for someone who uh, needs to be present over there for diwali dinner um, and, yeah i just wanted to say it is online as well online as well so this event is online as well you can register oh my it. god really and there are five complimentary tickets i have okay diwali dinner so please fill in the attendance tracker if you can make it i would love would love to host you sham ji is flying over i know that but even after that we have five more tickets so please fill it up if you are going to make it uh, that will be really nice to meet you in person amazing amazing wow that's great to know that this is going to be online as well i'm so excited to hear that yeah just to reiterate yes so it, because it is online actually all of us can participate and i think we should strive to do that and if you're in dallas i would really encourage you to come over um fill out the feedback tracker i think it's a great opportunity to bond together and and meet each yes. other please 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 do avail that opportunity okay great yeah thank you so much uh sandhya ji do you want to add something on to this before we move on to the next announcement for diwali dinner that's it yeah, yeah. okay you can share the link yeah yes i am going to share the link in the chat the next uh event i was going to share is about the tulsi viva uh which is going to be uh, november 4th and 5th that is going to be in the temple so we okay. all i By think the way, this this goes on like a marriage procession so if you have not attended one of these please come over there will be mehndi ceremony all the ceremonies that happen and it is done with a great fanfare and festivities so you watch tv this tv is going to be different tulsi viva okay so please come over if you are in or around dallas and you are going to enjoy the festivities and you could choose you know you have two options you could come from the bride groom side or the bride side can you believe your luck and either way you wow. get Yeah, and either way you will get food and you get a chance to dance right so please come over wow amazing yes so thank okay. you for uh, thank you for adding on to it uh, uh, nitin ji i'm going to put all the uh, links in the chat and uh, upcoming swami ji's um, tour i'm going to put the link for that as well in the chat 
It's sure. going to be India tour is in, I'm going to put the details. It's going to start November 18 to 22 in Puri, December 25 to 31st in Banara, and November 25 to 27, it, it's going to be in Delhi, Gurgaon. You so that the is details. very, very Everybody exciting does. news that uh, Swamiji is coming to your city. So please do not, do not miss this event. Thank you, great. Anything else, Sandhya, you wanted to share? Um, I don't know, daily activity tracker, but we can share it at the okay. end. Daily activity tracker will post the link. Please do avail that opportunity. Um, it's a great way to take a Diwali resolution, New Year resolution, or in general ongoing resolutions on things that you plan to work on and see how well you are faring. Something that cannot be measured, cannot be improved. And this is a great way to do that. I'm guilty of not updating it for the last few days, but I'm making a mental note of it. And trust me, I remember it. Okay, and I'll, I'll fill it honestly. But please go in and fill it out on a regular basis. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool to uh, you know, improve on things that you always wanted to work on. Okay, let's move back to our discussion then. I can see a few hands or any questions that you may have. Yes, Samji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Samji. Radhe Radhe. Nitinji, the guna, the three gunas that act on us, is it, it is definitely based on some scars, past some scars, mm -hmm. but can it also be due to karmic reactions? It is based on your, say, your gunas, they are your own calling. Things that we deeply contemplate, every thought actually leaves an imprint on our mind. It becomes a samskar. Anything that you deeply keep on thinking, it is a permanent storehouse in your chitta. Okay. And that tendency, you will be repeated with the same mind whenever you become human. So let's say you get upset or you have a habit of worrying unnecessarily or you, you have a lot of enviousness or greed. There's no escape from that. You will repeat with the same kind of a mind. Right. And that tendencies will manifest in some form of a guna. If you like to help others, then you will be predominant guna might be sattva. If you like to just enjoy intoxication, then your primary guna would be tamas. So it is our own calling. But the point is, you can actually observe yourself and transcend that guna. That can happen by observance. Or you can say, you choose to ride that guna. Like Duryodhan said, you know, I know what is good and what is bad, but this is what my tendency is. So I'm going to go with my tendency. Who's stopping him to override his tendency? Nobody is. He has the ability. That's what God is telling us. Okay. Deep question. We can talk more. Yes, uh, Neetuji, you had a question too. Neetuji, please go ahead. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Radhe, Radhe, everybody. And Nitinji, I have a question about those five complimentary tickets that you were talking about. <laughs> okay, please. So does that cover flight fare from Arizona too? So we can fly over. <laughs> I would love to. You tell me you want to come over and I'll, I'll send you that tickets as well. Sure, okay. I mean, I'm, and I'm serious about it. <laughs> Okay, I will I will uh, complete the feedback track and then please do that. Okay. We'd love to host you. Thank you so no, much. I'm serious, okay. You can't you can't back out in that case. No, we are ready to come. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Great. Great. Let's awesome. talk again. Awesome. Wow. Sandhya ji, please go ahead. So I just wanted to add this thing that uh, like how to kind of overcome this mentality of thinking about miseries and mistakes. One thing that Swamiji had said, mentality of abundance and uh, you know having gratitude of what all we are blessed with. If we just start thinking about that and count on our blessings and realize that there is abundance for each and every soul. And I mean, then I think we will automatically overcome uh, that problem with... Beautiful. Complaining mindset and miseries, yeah. Very true, very true. So it's a mindset of scarcity that leads to all these things. Oh, you know what? I'm missing out something in life. Or I'll lose out if I don't get it. Or my success depends on this. So when we have a mindset of abundance and we count on the graces we have received, you will get overwhelmed with emotion. Oh my God, I've got a human life. You know, and, and I have gotten an ability to um, you know, think and then I've gotten the association of the divine knowledge and I'm able to do this. I have an able body. I woke up today. So many blessings 
that we lose that sight and then start complaining about that one black spot that we think is too troublesome for us, right? It is said that there's a quotation in English, I was complaining about my shoes until I saw somebody without feet. So we lose that perspective in life. There are so many things we, we can be grateful about, but we pick that one agenda in life and keep brooding over it and bringing in negativity and pessimism around it. So yeah, that, that's our mindset basically, which can actually be shifted with proper practice and good knowledge. Great point, Sandhya. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. Anybody else uh, bringing in? Anybody who wants to say anything about the grandpa, what he did? If no questions. Okay. Yes. yes. Grandpa was unfair to grandma. <laughs> Yeah, grandma was taking her chances and grandpa did not help for sure. We are also taking our chances, by the way. Okay, we are big risk takers and gamblers. And we've been gambling on Maya since time eternity. We always pick an agenda in our mind, unfulfilled agenda. And then God says, all right, come back. Be my guest. I love you so much that I'll give you enough opportunities to have a firm belief that there is no happiness in this world. And until you don't believe in that, be my guest, keep repeating, keep enjoying and keep thinking, you know, that, you know, one day you will extract happiness in this world and I can wait. Yes, Shamji. Okay. Are you going to sing now? Are we, so are we officially, I think we have touched 10 o'clock already. So mm -hmm. this is how it goes. I After want to share my thought. Yeah. 900 seconds we devote to our devotion segment or have a bit of a conversation. So, you are welcome to stay back or drop off as your free will allows you. And let's hear Shamji in the meantime. Yeah, not Sagi, but my thoughts on the gala dinner. First, mm -hmm. as you are sponsoring all people in the satsang group, I am waiting for the last two years. I do not know what are. Yeah, actually, plans. I'm planning what to apply for a apply for a DWFBG. Diwali sponsorship loan. Okay, if there's somebody's in the bank here, can you please help me out on that? I should try for crowdfunding from this group, I guess. That will make more sense so that I can be there for some good time. Can we, I'm going to float a crowdfunding for Shamji's travel. Okay, let's support Shamji for that. And I Thank think we should, you. yeah, so we can we can try that. Dinner is on the house. And... Um, but virtual makes no sense. What will virtual do there? I can't eat. I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't put mehndi. I can't hug people around there. So what will virtual do to me? It's you can more listen like to Swamiji. You can listen that to I can do. Word. That I do. He is coming to India next month. I have already my plans to meet him in Delhi, Gurgaon next three days. So but you get you sweets online. There. You can see the sweets also online. That's what my issue is. Seeing online. We will we'll try to work out something for you, Shamji. I think looking at your uh, motivation to come to Dallas, uh, let's talk. I think you will be a perfect fit here. I tell you, the way, I always temple. hated. I hated some some countries from the core of my heart. Some some things in my life, and Krishna has made such a thing for me. I can tell you that whatever things I hated, I didn't want to do. He made me do. In the last ten years, he made sure that let me let me help you out. Everything which was against me, for me, he did it for me and had to do it unknowingly. But as you say, misery. See, I was also in the same state for, for some time. Initially, I was also cursing, cursing people, cursing God, my Merry Kismet, my this, my that. But it took me some time. It is not an easy thing to come to terms with God. It took me all, I, I'll say, three, four, five years to come to terms with him. And then when I was with him, it was so simple, so easy, I can tell you. I couldn't even realize ki what I'm going through. Because with this, with this flow, with his grace, and for the last four, four, five, five years, I'm, I would say, I can't even feel anything. Ki, is it this misery or is this the material material knowledge, material gain, material loss? You can't even feel that way. We are talking here, if this happens, this happens. And I am, I am a clear example. There is no if. This has happened with me and it took me some time to come out of it. And now I'm there with his, with his grace, with his will. I don't even think anything else. I just it go is, with the flow. It is called being in Sthit Pragya state. Okay, so very yeah. nice. Good to it, hear. It takes some time to be there, but 
once you are there you just you just can't even imagine how you feel that way wonderful yeah. thank you always pleasure to hear your insights and realizations around this path very nice thank you shyam ji radhe okay. radhe wonderful manishi you wanted to sing today actually i have a few comments if it's okay if we have time still if not then you can sing that and then uh, you can raise your hand after this if you want to chant maybe a couple of chants we can do and then wrap up our session for today tomorrow i don't know what we are going to discuss i forgot and okay there was something i planned for but somebody can remember you can let me know this, this is the old age problem right your memory starts fading yes manish go ahead <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, so I just uh, wonderful session. I joined a little bit late, but uh, um, I just wanted to add a few things that you know this. Uh, if I'm wrong, then please do correct me. This world is perfect because it's designed by God. So the only thing we have in control is our internal world, and that's the only thing that we can control. we don't have any control over the external world or what happens and uh so a lot of time it's you know it, the external stuff is just accept things as prasad buddhi and go with whatever to go with the flow the internal world is what we can control um make ourselves better and then also the um a lot of time the problem sometimes miseries you know is a lot of it is due to our own karma as direct sufferings for uh spiritual progress and uh, you know from my experience that's what's happened in my life earlier and uh that's made me a better person to grow from so uh, i mean i could be wrong but that's that's my understanding and contemplation on things thank you radhe radhe so oh, that's beautiful points and there are deep in you know realizations reflections that you had manish ji uh truly valuable and i'm sure people will derive a lot of inspiration and understanding from it so thanks for sharing that great so tomorrow we talk about spiritual evolution okay where are we in that trajectory is what we are going to talk about it's a reflective exercise that we are going to do and uh, we will break it down to the fundamental level you know what is it the enablers that you need even to get on to the path of spirituality for that matter okay let's pick up a couple of hands palavi ji are you going to sing today my heart beat has already started racing great and we have uh, we, yeah i'm waiting for devotional uh, segment yeah sure so we have shri ramya ji you are singing as well lakshmi ji you are as well three hands today for singing lakshmi ji whatever you said was nice but i could not hear that let okay. me please unmute her yeah lakshmi ji please go ahead yeah oh Yes, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to share my own experience uh, presently, which I'm passing through. I met with an accident where I had a little spinal injury. Then the first day I thought, uh, "Why my? For me, why?" Then I said, "No, no. I should be. I should not think like that. It has to happen. Happen." So I thought I should make a uh, time good out of it. So uh, it is six weeks past now. but i'm very happy that was a, not a misery for me i took much of the time the work which i was spending lot time back i did all that i did the presentation i'm doing some other work i'm reading books i thought it was a nice time which i missed all this work to be spending all this so i have done lot my work so this how from lamenting from all this misery why for me i have come down to take it is there i have to accept i should make good out of the thing what is present in my hands so that is my realization presently Beautiful. thank you swami ji calls it the the technique of positive reframing you know whatever situation you are you look at the positive reframing and that is that becomes our mindset you know how we look at things and wish you a speedy recovery uh, lakshmi ji hope you you are recovering well we yes. loved to yes. see we yes. saw your video and good to see you in action along with your sister so thank you so much for sharing that it's always a pleasure thank to you. thank you thank you radhe 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 yes shri ramya thank you lakshmi ji yeah wish you a uh, speedy recovery yeah thank you thank you so much yes shri ramya ji please go ahead 
Please go ahead, Sri Ramya Ji. Radhe Radhe. I uh, wanted to uh, sing a bhajan. Yes, sure. Please Radhe. go ahead. So we have Sri Ramya Ji and we have Pallavi Ji and Payal Ji. So we can have three, and then we can wrap up our session today. Please go uh, ahead, Sri Ramya. Uh, can Can you uh, just give me a moment? My screen is frozen for the lyrics. So. Uh, you can have more than a moment. Okay, this moment is already passed by. Uh, or can I take up next if somebody else goes? Meanwhile, I'll refresh. Okay, okay, sure. No, okay. I can go. I can go. Jag me sundar hai do na. Chahe Krishna ka ho ya Ram. Bolo Ram, 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 bolo. Shyam, 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 Chag me sundar hai do naam, Chahi Krishna kahu ya Ram, Bolo Ram, 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 Bolo, Shyam, Shyam, Shyam. Maankhan brij me ek churave, Ek beer bhilni ke khave, माखन ब्रज में एक चुरावे एक बीर भिलनी के खावे प्रेम भाव से भरे अनोखे दोनों के हैं काम चाहे कृष्ण कहो या राम जग में सुंदर हैं दो नाम चाहे कृष्ण कहो या राम बोलो राम Ram Ram Bolo, Sham Sham Sham. Ek Radhika ke sang Raja, Ek Jan ke sang Viraja. Chahe Sita Ram kaho, Chahe Sita Ram kaho ya, Bolo Radhe Sham. Chahi Krishn kaho ya Ram, Chag me sundar hai do naam, Chahi Krishn kaho ya Ram, Bolo Ram, Ram Ram, Bolo, Sham Sham Sham, Bolo Ram, Ram Ram, Bolo, Sham Sham Sham. Beautiful Pallavi ji, very very nice. Anup Julota would have loved to do Jugal Bandi with you if he hears that. Wonderful. It's my favorite bhajan. I love this. It's a very nice bhajan. Very nicely sung. Thank you for I that. I think we are going to get a clip out of it very soon that I have a good feeling. It will get on portal very soon. I have a feeling somebody is going to do that very soon. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank for you that. for the opportunity. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Um, Shri Rame, you ready? Are you ready? Ramya Ji, uh, okay, uh, let me unmute you. Okay, are you ready? Sri Ramya Ji. Radhika Ji. Ore more man, Sri Radhika Raman, Nishitina guna pana kaye cha. Ore more man, Sri Radhika Raman, Nishitina guna pana kaye in the chin and a bad eye, cha. Pull the pulley frame of bad eye, da. Ore more money. We
Thank you. Beautiful, Sri Ramya. Very nicely sung. My favorite one out of this is that, that right? Shama Sham Milan Hit Nit Prati Nanan Nir Bahaja. Very nice, Sri Ramya. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. We have two more hands. Manishi, you wanted to go as well? Okay, we have time. Yes, sure, sure. Please, please go ahead. ahead and then we have Payal Ji after that. So we can take two more. Okay, yeah. this is just a Tomei uh, Vamata uh, version in my uh, in Gujarati, a different version. So okay. a few lines from it. Sure. Okay. Uh, tumhi ho mata pita tumhi ho tumhi ho bandhu sakha tumhi ho tumhi ho saathi <coughs> तुम ही सहारे कोई न अपना सिवा तुम्हारे तुम ही हो नैया तुम ही के वैया तुम ही हो बंधु सखा तुम ही हो जो क्यों सके ना वो फूल हम है तुम्हारे चरणों की धूल हम है दया की दृष्टि सदा Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Very nice, uh, Manishi. Reminds me of our assemblies. You know, we used to sing that in our assembly during the school days. So you took us back to that. Okay, I don't know how many years back that was. Okay, I have forgotten that too, but. You took us down the memory lane. Very nice. It's a beautiful uh, bhajan. Thank you so much, Manishi. And last, but yes, sorry. Please go ahead. Oh, sorry, you... I, I muted him. Yeah, sorry. Please go ahead. Yes, last but not the least, Payalji. We are ready. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Yes. Okay, that, I'll just sing uh, two lines. Just two lines. <clears throat> पूछते हो कैसे चले आएंगे मुरारी पूछते हो कैसे चले आएंगे मुरारी कौन सी सुनाए धुन लगे उन्हें प्यारी कौन सी सुनाए धुन लगे उन्हें प्यारी बोल राधे बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे बोल राधे बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे पूछते हो कैसे चले आएंगे मुरारी कौन सी सुनाए धुन लगे उन्हें प्यारी बोल राधे बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे बोल राधे बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे चले आएंगे मुरारी बोल राधे 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 थैंक यू सो मच very nice priority wonderful i think uh, murari might be somewhere nearby okay because of the singing that you did very nice wonderful thank you so much so, you know i just said that um, whenever we say radhe sham has to run anyway he seated with him but he runs right but then of course he cannot reveal himself because of the obvious reasons but he's always running whenever you call Rathi. Okay. Thinking about it. That is how powerful. So beautifully sung. Loved it. And that's a great way of ending the session. Like it is said, you should speak only if it improves the quality of the silence. But I've already spoken. So I can only say Rathi Rathi from here on. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening and a wonderful day ahead. Thank you, Nitinji, for such an awesome session. Thanks to all of you. Stay blessed.
see you all tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. Night, good day.